Hello, my name is Vignesh, and this is going to be Math Lecture 14 in the Math Lecture Series. Today, we're going over triangles. So triangles are a pretty common topic on the SAT, as you've probably already seen throughout your like, practice test or practice questions. But there's basically a couple main things about triangles that you need to know. And obviously, there's also trigonometry, which is its own big topic, which we will be going over in a separate video slash notes. So I, I think that there's so much information there that it, it needs two separate videos. But yeah, staying on topic, this is the basics of triangles. It's pretty simple. I feel like you probably already learned this in like, like either like L2 elementary school and middle school. But it's basically you have a, a triangle three side, as, 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 as I think everyone knows. And a, however, all the angles of, of a triangle do add up to 180. So like all these angles have to add up to 180. And then we also know that one, the largest side length of a triangle, it has to, it has to be less than the sum of the two triangles a two other sides of a triangle. So for instance, let's say I have, this is 20 and this is X and Y. X plus Y have to be greater than 20. And the reason for that is if you think like logically here, if you have like one long side and you have two really short sides, you can, like there's no way for these two sides to connect. There's no way for these two sides to connect anywhere. So you won't be able to form a triangle. So that's basically that rule. There's, there's three different types of triangles. There's Equilateral, isosceles, and scalene. Equilateral is basically where all the side lengths are the same, and also all the angle measures are the same at 60 degrees. And the reason we know it's 60 is because if they're all the same and all the angles add up to 180, that means it has to be 180 divided by 3, which is 60. That's what an equilateral triangle and an isosceles triangle, on the other hand, is where two sides are the same, and these two angles will be the exact same. And these two angles are the, the are dependent on whatever, like the measure of these two angles is dependent on whatever measure this angle is. So, but just remember, if you have an isosceles triangle like this, it's the it's the two opposite angles. So it's not the angle where it's not it's not that angle. It's not that angle. It's these two angles. It's not the angle where the it's not the angle where the two equal sides meet up. And then the scalene triangle, which is basically just all this, all the sides do like have different measures, like three, five, nine, like they have different measures. Obviously, this is not too scale, but I'm just like giving an example. And the angle measures are also the same. But there's also the right triangle, which is what we're going to be going over next. Right triangles are basically a triangle that have that has a 90 degree angle, and the other two angles are acute angles, which means they're less than 90, and they actually add up to 90. Both those, both of these two angles. And they can obviously still be the same, which means they can each be 45 or they can be different. And the, the, the more important equation you need to know for right triangles is, is that if you have a triangle like this, these two, these two sides right here, these are called the legs of the, of the triangle. And this is called the hypotenuse of the triangle, like the, the longest side. So we can write an equation for this, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So let's say these are where a and b are the legs, side length of the leg, and c is the side length of the hypotenuse. So let's say we have three, four, and we want to know what this side length is going to be. So we, what we can do is we do three squared plus four squared equals c squared. That's three squared is nine plus four squared, which is 16. That's 25 equals c squared, square with both sides, c equals five. So that means the side is a five. So yeah, that's basically something that is, you can, is a way you can use Pythagorean theorem. Next, we have some special by triangles. These are like the 45, these are the two triangles I have like right here, the 45, 45, 90 triangle and the 30, 60, 90 triangle. So basically what special by triangles are is that they, like, they, sh they show the proportion of like the sides. The reason we can do that is if we actually skip ahead, is because of similar triangles. Similar triangles are where the triangles have the same angle measurement. However, the sides are different. But the, the, but the sides are also, like, the, the ratio of the sides are also the same. So an example, is, let's say you have A, B, C, and D, E, F. D, E right here, and A, B, and let's say all the angles are the same, obviously. So if we're saying all the angles are the same, so A, B, this side length right here corresponds to D, E. So let's say this is five, six and this is three. I can see right here, this is a two to one ratio. It's six over three, which is a two to one ratio. So what that also means is, is that let's say I have A, C is four. 
I can find out what DF is because I know the ratio is going to be four. Let's say four. Let's say DF is X. Four over X is going to have to be equal to. It's, it's the same ratio, so that means X would have to be equal two. So that's basically how what similar triangles are, and if we then. If we didn't go back to specialized triangles, using that knowledge of similar triangles, we we can now know, we now know that since the these are like these are special thing where the angle measure the same, we have we have the proportions already written out for what each side should be. So what are these proportions? Well, this side is going to be two to two times x. And this is for 30, 60, 90 triangles. This side, the shortest side is going to be x, and this is going to be root three x. So what does that mean? Let's say I have a, I'm drawing a triangle right here, and this let's say I'm saying this side is one, and this is 30, 60, 90. So if this side is one, then that means that means x is equal to one, which means this side will be root three, and this side will be two. And also these these triangle diagrams will be provided in the SAT. However, it's much better if you memorize them because it, it can make it much easier to recognize them than having to switch back and forth back like throughout the test. Also, but it, obviously x doesn't have to equal one. So let's say um let's say I'm using this triangle here. The proportions are different, by the way. So let's say I have a 45, 45, 90 triangle, and in this case, this side is nine. Well, I know that this side also that means x is equal to nine. So this side also has to equal nine, and this side has to equal nine root two. So that's basically like how special by triangles work. It's just memorizing what the ratios of the sides are going to be. Or like what the factors of the size is going to be. I guess that's maybe an easy way to say that. Next, we have radians. This is more for like when you're doing, sometimes you, do, you use radians when you're doing a trig. It's like a nut, it's another unit of measurement other than degrees. Like usually we say 60 degrees, right? But we can also say that angle of measurement in like a, in radians. And to convert degrees to radians, we have this conversion factor, pi radians over 180 degrees. So whatever degrees you have, you multiply by this fraction to get it, to get to, to radians. And usually you won't have to actually like give a specific number. Like you would just say, like let's say it's 180. Let's do trying to convert 180. You would just say pi. You wouldn't say 3.14 blah blah. You would, you just write pi. Or if it asks you to round, you round. So like, so like let's say it was like 360 degrees. You would just write two pi. You wouldn't write like you you wouldn't do two times 3.14 unless it asks you to. And and if you're converting radians to degrees, you just multiply by a reciprocal. 180 degrees over pi radians. Okay, now we're going to go over a couple extra practice problems. Again, these notes as well as practice problems are in Google Classroom. If you're not in a Google Classroom, you can click in the link in the description. And I think the link, there's also a link in the description to, to, act, to all the notes without doing the Google Classroom. Also, th these practice problems are from a College Panda textbook like for SAT math. I highly suggest you, if, if you want extra practice, you can buy it. There's a link in the description to buy the textbook. It's a pretty good textbook Like if, if you want more in depth and they, they, they go much more in depth with their notes and obviously it's written by professionals. So big shout out to them. But yeah, moving on, I call, I'm just gonna go over a couple of these questions. I suggest you just do the questions on your own and all of them and the answers are at the end. And again, these questions are from College Panda. Yeah, so number four, in the figure above, A, B and C, D are parallel. What is the length of AB? So we know AB and CD are parallel, like, parallel lines. Sorry, I don't know why I switched. So we know AB and CD are parallel lines. So what that tells us is that, remember when we dealt with parallel lines before, if we have an angle that goes across, we know that this angle and this angle are, are similar. Or like, are, this, are congruent, I mean. And this angle, and this angle is congruent. Oh yeah, by the way, if you if you ever confused by why I draw like one line for the angle here and like two lines for the angles here, the reason I'm doing that is it's to signify that these two angles are different. However, this angle and this angle are the same. It's, it's just a way to signify that like it, 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 the, the, the angles that have two lines are the same, but, but they're different than the angles that have one line. It's just a way to signify congruent angles. But yeah, so it's knowing this, and we also know this angle has to be equal to this angle because the vertical angles. So since we know all the angles are the same, what do we know? We know it's similar triangles. So now we have to determine which sides are, are which sides relate to which. Well, I can already, so 
I, these are the dudes like, in the case where like it's rotated and stuff. You just go from from like one angle to the other angle. So I know from from the trip the triple line angle to the double line angle, it's it is is this is corresponds to the triple line angle and and this triangle to the double line angle. So these two sides are this are, are, cor are like, corresponding sides, which means the ratio is let's it's four over three. You said four. Yeah, it's four over three. So now I want to find where AB is. So that is from one, one angle, one one line to two line angle. So that's this side right here. So that means this is this ratio is equal to x over six. So if I just multiply both sides by six, I would get twenty four over three equals x. X equals eight, and that is the right answer. Moving on to number 13. This is also a pretty simple one. And this is a this is just to give you an example of how to convert degrees to radians. So in this case, we have 225 degrees. So if we're, if we're doing degrees to radians, we, do, we multiply that by pi radians over 180 degrees. So the degrees cancel out. So we're left with just the radian unit. So what we, what we do is we would take out our calculator and just do if you want to just make it simple, since you know all is going to be in pi, you just do 225 divided by 180, and that's 5, 4, so you know it's going to be 5 over 4 pi, which is answer choice C. The other one we're going over is number 21. In the figure above, ABCD is a, it's a square of side bank 3, so all these side banks are 3. If AW is equal to AZ, which is equal to CX, which is equal to CY is equal to one. What is the perimeter of the rectangle WXYZ? So we know this is one, 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 one. And we also know that that means this is two, 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 because of the active add up to three. What we also know is we know these, these are all right triangles. So if these are all right tri triangles, we, all, we also know that <clears throat> And these two side lengths are the same. We know that this is a 40, 40, 45, 45, 90 triangle. So remember a 45, 45, 90 triangle, that means this side's gonna be root two. And this side, since it's two, two, it would be two root two. And this side would also be root two, and this side would also be two root two. And if you add this all together, it's six root two, which is why C is the right answer. So this is where like recognizing what special right triangles are is really helps you. Because no one does it say use special right triangles. You just have to know about them, which is why if you if you rely only on the formula that the, that the test gives you, it can be kind of tricky. So you have to be able to be familiarize yourself of when you have to use some uh, special by triangles. Finally, I'm going to go over 25. What's the length of DB in the figure above? This is also useful special by triangles. This is more obvious because it says 60, 45, 45. So I know this side is already going to be 30. So length of DB, well, if I know this side is two, that means this side is also two, and that means this is, this is two root two. And if this is two root two, remember this side is supposed to be the root three side, because this is, a, if we draw the same triangle, it would be two X, <clears throat> one X, root three X. So that's why if that's, if that's supposed to be root three, that means if we do, 2 root 2 over root 3, that is equal to this side. So 2 root 3 root 2 over root 3. So that means this side is equal to 2 times that. So it's 4 root 2 over root 3. And since we, but we can't have a, what's it called? Um, we can't have like a radical on the bottom, on a denominator of a fraction. So you to multiply both sides by root 3. I mean, top and bottom, I mean. So that gives us 4 root 6 over three, which is answer choice C. So I hope this basically gives you a taste of triangles and like how you need to like use special by triangles and other properties of triangles. So yeah, and, and again, next week is gonna be trig. So that's also a really important one. These are I feel like are some of the most important topics. So be on the lookout for that. And that's basically it. Have a nice day and best of luck on your SAT adventure or journey or whatever you wanna call it.